Hi Year 11, so this is going to be a video when I, where I introduce this table which is sometimes known as the standard reduction potential table and that's kind of what I stick to or it is the same name as it's in the heading here the standard electrode potentials okay they're meaning the same table but I tend to use the reduction table or standard reduction table more okay so it looks like this it's a list of reactions okay um, it, you may recognize, and why I put it here at 90 degrees on the side, it's the activity series, okay? We've got potassium up the top, it lines up there, and you'll see there's a, a few more of these ones in here, but you've got gold down the bottom too, but we don't have gold on here, do we have platinum and other things, but we've got a variety of things, but it's still the same, it's an activity table, okay? Still the same idea, you're still where you see an overlap, they'll still be in the same order, okay? So we've got a, a chemical species here, we've got something more broad rather than just metals because other things can be oxidized and reduced, but we've still got it in an activity series, okay? Um, so we always have access to this table on our data sheet, okay? So you'll find this table on your data sheet you do not need to remember it, you just need to know how to use it and what it means, okay? Uh, the least you can do is learn how to use it. Um, it really helps you out if you know what it means, okay? So we've still got the same kind of order, the most reactive here on our table at the top and the least reactive down the bottom, okay? And we'll learn how to read it a bit more, okay? So as I was just saying, well, the most reactive here at the top is our potassium solid, okay? And we've got it on the right-hand side here. We'll talk about it more why. And down the bottom, the most least reactive that wasn't on our activity series here is fluoride down the bottom, okay? So we know that fluoride is very, very stable, okay? That fluorine really uh, wants to take on that one extra electron to have a full outer shell. It's the most electronegative element. So it's the most stable, it's the most happiest, it's the least reactive of all of these. And we know that potassium has one valence electrons. It really wants to get rid of it. It really wants to reduce, or actually, <laughs> wrong way around, it really wants to oxidize to, to potassium plus, okay? So here we've got our most reactive versus our least reactive on the right hand side of these equilibrium reactions, okay? So these ones weakly hold on to electrons or weakly attract electrons, these ones hold on to them very, very much so, like the fluoride. On the other side of the equation though, we've got the oxidized species, okay? So up the top, our potassium there, we've got the oxidized potassium, or K+. Plus. Okay, we know that's very stable. It's the least reactive on this side. Okay, K plus. It's so happy. Go down to the other end, right down to the bottom. We're getting the most reactive on this side, the most reactive oxidized. We're getting fluorine too, fluorine gas. Okay, it doesn't like to be there. It really likes to be as an ion. It doesn't like those that un that lone electron there. It really wants to be as fluoride. Okay, so that's the most reactive on this left-hand side is how we got it, okay? All right, so as I was just saying, on the right-hand side of our table, we've got the reduced species, and on the left-hand side of the table from this reaction, we've got the oxidized species. So we're going from the oxidized on the left to the reduced, okay? And so these reactions are all reduction reactions. And so that's why it's the standard reduction potential, because they're all reduction reactions, okay? We could have chosen that the other way, but we've just, we're putting consistency and we're just saying, uh, we're just considering them all reduced, okay? All right. The other piece of information that you've probably been looking at is with a big V is it will give a voltage of our half equation here. And that's a measure of the strength of attracting and holding onto electrons. 
okay? So you'll notice here at the top where we've got our potassium, the voltage is the least, okay? And down the bottom, the strength of, of, of uh, attracting and holding on onto electrons is the most positive, okay? It really wants to go that way. It really wants to be fluoride. This one, uh, uh, most negative, it really doesn't want to go that way at all. No, that's the least likely reduction to happen. Okay, so the more positive the value of the voltage, the more affinity it has for electrons. The more it will want to be in the reduced form, the more likely that reaction is going to happen. Okay, so look at the bottom, F2 plus two electrons going to fluoride. We know that is very likely and it's very happy and very, and we'll get to knowing that it's very energy, uh, I was gonna say efficient, but energetically flav favorable, flavorable. <laughs> energetically favorable big words um the ne the more negative ones up the top of our table um are the ones that are, are not likely to happen it really doesn't like going that way at all okay um just a word of warning here i probably think it's a good way a good spot to put it in this standard reduction table sometimes you may come across another source and instead of going like our table from the negative to positive, they, they flip it around, they mirror image it and go from positive to negative, okay? What I've done is just kept our reduction table from, uh, from our data sheet, which you'll get in the HSC and which we'll work with always, okay? To keep it consistent, okay? Um, but hopefully if you're noticing the trends and the why, if you ever get one that's flipped around, hopefully you still be able to navigate it and use it, okay? But for us, our negative is up the top and the positive is down the bottom. But if you see a table flipped around online, don't freak out. The numbers don't really change. The numbers of these reactions, maybe they might change by a tenth of a volt. Oh, actually not one of the hundredths of a volt. They might, there might be some discrepancy there with online sources, but pretty much they're the same. Okay. So the standard reduction potential or oxidation or Standard potential of a reduction or oxidation reaction. It's a numerical value and we can call it the electromotive force or EMF for those physics people that have been nodding their heads. Okay, it's a, for us, for us, uh, not in physics, it's the ability to hold and attract electrons. Okay, and we use the units volts uh, because it's a potential. Uh, EMF uh, measurements and potentials cannot be measured absolutely, okay? That means there's no starting point, really. And so we choose an arbitrary zero volts, something that we can call zero volts that we can compare the rest to. And we could have chosen anything as chemists, but what we did is we chose the reduction of hydrogen, this reaction here. So two H pluses or two protons plus two electrons giving H2 gas. We called the, the potential for that half reaction to be zero volts. And then what we did is we found out all these potentials compared to that zero volts. So that's why we get some negative and some positive, okay? It's an arbitrary zero. We chose that zero. Okay. Um, oh. It is presented in a numerical voltage, value of voltage, sometimes with most positives at the top, sometimes with most negatives down the top. Our data sheet, as I said on the last slide, has the negative on top. I was just getting ahead of myself. All right, let's keep going and let's talk how we use it, okay? So we're talking about an example of silver and copper, so silver ions in contact with copper metal, and we get a displacement reaction, okay? So copper... Here's our copper half reaction. It's oxidized to copper two plus, two electrons are then produced, and its partner is the silver ion where it's consuming one electron and is turning to silver solid. So that's our reduction because it's going from positive one down to oxidation state of zero. So I've highlighted these two, two equations that relate to it on the table, okay? Notice, that the copper one goes the opposite, OK? 
okay? Because that's our oxidation reaction. So it happens in oxidation, but since we've got a reduction table, that reaction is reversed. So we're still talking about the same reaction, but we're talking about it reversed, okay? Silver goes the same way. See, silver plus plus electron. So our reduction reaction goes the correct way, okay? So our reduction reaction goes the correct way on the reduction table. Our oxidation reaction goes in the reverse way, okay? So we get a displacement reaction with these two half equations, okay? Well, this slide's pretty much just what I said before. So I get, oh, actually, no, it's a different example. Oh, what a silly duffer. So now I'm bringing up the example of copper and iron. Iron. So here, we're getting iron solid going to iron 2 plus, so it's being oxidized, and copper 2 plus going to copper 0, so it's being reduced. So reduced, we're expecting our copper equation to go the correct way on our reduction table, which it is, copper 2 plus going to copper solid. And our iron, because it's oxidized, should be going the reverse. And here it is, iron solid going this way to iron 2 plus, okay? So again, we've got our reduction half equation and then going the right way and our oxidation reduction going the opposite, okay? Here we go. You may have already picked it up about which one's which and where they sit on the table. A redox reaction that works between an iron and a metal happens when the reduction half is more positive or has a higher value than the oxidation half equation, okay? So here with copper and iron, we had a, re we had a displacement reaction because look at our copper there and look at our iron there. So our copper, our reduction half, was more positive, so it's 0.34 volts, but our oxidation half was more negative, it's negative 0.44 volts. When you have those conditions, you get a redox reaction that works, okay? However, and here's what I'm hoping for here, there's not a reaction the opposite way around, okay? So when you have iron ions, so when you have this reaction going as it is forwards, and you're trying to do the opposite, this one backwards, you get no reaction, okay? no reaction. So for the reaction to occur, the reduction half equation must be more positive, or for us, more down here than the oxidation. The oxidation needs to be more up here, the negative side of it, okay? If they're the other way around, no reaction. Is that what I've written here? A reduction between an ion and a metal occurs when the reduction half equation has a higher, more positive, yep, than the oxidation half. Good. Here I'm bringing back the copper and silver, okay? Silver ions react with copper metal as our reduction reaction is more positive than our oxidation, okay? Our oxidation is more negative. It's not negative, it's just a lower, lower value. We've got 0 0.80 compared to 0 0.340, okay? So this one's going for the forward, and it's more positive, and this one's going backwards, and it's more negative. It's not negative, but it's more negative. So we get a reaction happening, okay? But do the opposite, try to switch it around, and no reaction occurs, okay? Let's look at some examples. Which of these combinations will result in a reaction, okay? So here we've got silver plus, there it is there, and manganese metal, here it is here. So we've got this one hoping to go forward and this one hoping to go backwards, okay? Is the reduction, this equation, which is going forward on the reduction table, so it's the reduction, is it more positive than the oxidation, okay? Yes, 0 0.80, I know I cross through it, compared to negative 0.18, so yes, we've got it the right way around, good. Yes, so we will get a reaction. Okay, let me just erase my scribbles on my table and let's consider the next one. 
lead 2 plus because lead 2 plus and nickel solid all right so lead 2 plus would need to be oxidized and nickel will need to be reduced okay so will this occur well our reaction that we're hoping our metal to be reduced is lower down it's more positive it's negative 0.13 compared to negative 0.24 okay so here again we've got the reduction half equation being more positive than the oxidation so yes a reaction will occur all right rub it out and let's look at the next one we've got tin 2 plus let's find it here on the left it will need to be reduced tin 2 plus there it is and copper metal copper metal it usually goes to copper 2 plus notice how it's here in both that one's copper metal going back to copper 1 this one's copper metal going to copper back to 2 it's usually copper going to 2 plus in question so we'll keep it to the copper to copper 2 plus okay so the reaction is asking about is it's saying will that one go forward and this one will go reverse okay so for a reaction to occur we need the reduction half to be more positive than the oxidation half our reduction half is negative 0.14 our oxidation half is 0.34 that's the opposite of what we're looking for no reaction will occur Let's keep going. I've got aluminium 3 plus being reduced. Here it is. There's a reduction half. And lead solid. Let's presume it's this one going to lead 2 plus. Okay. So it's asking if will that one go that way and will that one go that way. Okay. So that's our oxidation half and that's our reduction half. It's reduction half because it's going forward on the reduction table. So for a reaction to occur, we need the reduction half to be more positive than the oxidation half. Is negative 1.68 more positive than negative 0.13? No. No reaction. <clears throat> okay, iron 3 plus. Where is it hiding? Here we go. Iron 3 plus. I, uh, oxidized to iron 2 plus. And H2, here we go. That was our standard, wasn't it? Our zero. So it's asking for iron 3 plus to go that way to 2 plus or be reduced. And our hydrogen to go to H plus or be oxidized. Okay, is our reduction half equation voltage more positive? Yes. 0.77 is more positive than 0 0.00, so therefore we get a reaction. Keep going. Uh, bromine 2. Uh, bromine. Alright, I'm presuming uh, aqueous. Okay, notice how here I had the choice liquid aqueous. That's the difference. So here we had the aqueous one, so we've got that one. And hydroxide. Here we've got hydroxide going back to oxygen and water. So it's asking us this reaction that way, and that reaction that way. That reaction, the bromine reaction, is a reduction. This one is an oxidation. Okay? It's going the opposite way to the reduction table. Okay, is the reduction half more positive than the oxidation half? 1.10 versus 0 0.40. Yes, we've got the condition, so we get a reaction there. What do we got next? We've got zinc and zinc 2 plus and chloride. So let's find zinc 2 plus. There it is up there, being reduced to zinc. So we're asking about that, oh, that forward reaction. And let's find the chloride. Here it is here going to chlorine. 
chloride being oxidized to chlorine. Okay, so that's our reduction. Is our reduction more positive than our oxidation? Negative 0.76 versus 1.36? No, that reaction is not going to occur. All right, our last one. Sulfate. Oh, where's sulfate hiding? Here it is. Sulfate can be reduced to sulfur dioxide. So we're asking about this forward reaction. It's forward on the reduction table, so it's a reduction. And bromide, uh, aqueous. So we're talking about this reverse one. Bromide going back to bromine. Bromide, bromide going back to bromine. Okay. So that way, the opposite way is an oxidation. Is the reduction half equation more positive than oxidation? No, it's the wrong way around. No reaction. Okay. Example two. Give the full redox equation for a spontaneous redox reaction. Reaction. <laughs> two reactions. Let's cross it out. Between aluminium and lead. So aluminium's up here. And... Let's down here. So we're going to have to figure out which combination of ion and metal will give us a spontaneous re reaction. Okay. Remember, the more positive will want to go in the reduction way. So the more positive for us is the one lower down on the table. So in for us here, it's lead. So lead will want to go in the forward way. And therefore, the further on up will want to go in the opposite way. Okay, so reading that, we will want lead 2 plus, plus 2 electrons to go to lead solid. And then we'll want the oxidation of aluminium. Aluminium solid going to aluminium 3 plus, plus 3 electrons to balance it out. Okay, so the full redox equation, we've got our two half equations that will be uh, that will give a reaction. Let's check our electrons. Two electrons consumed, three produced. Uh, to get the same number consumed and produced, that one's multiplied by three, this one's by two, so we get six electrons being consumed and six electrons being uh, produced. And now let's add them together. Change my color back. So we're going to have everything on the left at the top multiplied by three, so three lead ions plus my six electrons plus my two aluminium solids okay that's everything on the left uh, on my right I'm producing three lead solids plus two aluminium three pluses plus my six electrons which cancel so there's my overall equation for my spontaneous or the reaction that will occur between lead and aluminium. I need lead ions reacting with aluminium solid because lead likes electrons more than aluminium. So a lead ion will steal electrons from aluminium. Okay, another example. Uh, the spontaneous or the reaction that will occur between permanganate and zinc. Permanganate is all the way down the bottom. Okay that one there so it's going that way to form manganese 2 plus so it's the reduction half and I'm guessing that it's not fluorine so what's what are we talking about we're talking about zinc so zinc 2 plus okay so it will need to go because it's more negative in the reverse reaction so it will need to be our oxidation reaction so permanganate uh, oh oops sorry <laughs> so my permanganate plus my 8H plus so remember this one's the more positive so it's going the reduction way which is the correct way that we see in the table plus 5 electrons are going to manganese 2 plus plus four waters okay and our oxidation half is the zinc one backwards so zinc solid going to 
zinc 2 plus plus 2 electrons. Okay, we need to smash them together or add them together. We're going to have to multiply because 5 are being consumed and 2 are being produced. The lowest common factor is 10, so multiply that one by 5 and this one by 2. And now we'll add them together. So we need 2 permanganates plus 16 H pluses, plus my 10 electrons, plus my 5 zincs from the one below. Looks like 52, doesn't it? <laughs> reaction arrow. Terrible reaction arrow. I'm trying to squish it all in. 2 manganese 2 plus, plus 4 waters, plus 5 zinc 2 plus got my states didn't I? I'm gonna scribble them in there. You can do better. <laughs> Trying to squish it in. All right so there's my full redox equation there. Okay I think we'll leave this for the next video.